Hello everyone, I'm Huang Ranzhen from East China Normal University. It's a pleasure pr to present our work NAT480 using no autogressive translation makes autogressive translation faster and better. Uh, with the increasing number of web documents, the demand for translation has increased uh, dramatically. Autogressive translation mode needs to generate translation seriously. This, this makes it unable to effectively using the parallel computing capability of existing drivers such as GPUs. So its uh, translation quality is good, but uh, its uh, inference speed is slow. Different from AT mode, the no autogressive translation mode generates translation in parallel. Generally, it uh, first predicts the length of the uh, translations and then input the corresponding corresponding number of the tokens into the decoder and allowing it to predict uh, the all token at the same time. NAT cannot explicitly model the left to right relationship between the translation tokens. So its uh, translation quality is poor, but uh, its inference speed is fast. So in this paper, our goal is to combine these two modes to build a better translation system which can translate uh, faster and uh, better. Uh, although existing works show that NAT performs worse than AT, this is a corpse level comparison. From a more frequent perspective, we still have two questions. First, how similar are the translations generated by AT and NAT for the same source sentence? Second, do AT and NAT have their own strengths for different source sentences? Therefore, we conduct the experiments to compare these two modes at the sentence level. The table one shows the uh, AT mode and the two NAT mode, as well as the performer of fusing the two. And the meaning of the max function is to select the higher blue score between AT and NAT as the final translations. As we can see, even GLAT, whose performer is far worse than AT, can still significantly improve the final translation quality by performing the uh, max operation with the AT. This shows that there is a complementarity between AT and NAT. And the figure 2 shows the blue difference and the overlap rate between the translations generated by AT and NAT for the 3,000 and 3 source sentence. And uh, we can see from the figure, the blue part shows the some sentences are translated better by AT mode, and some sentences are translated better by NAT mode, the, which for further verifies the complementarity between AT and NAT. And the orange part shows that the overlap rate between most translations are very high, existing the uh, 75%. This experiment result shows that there is a complementarity and a high similarity between the AT and NAT translations, which provides the possibility to uh, merging these two modes. Therefore, we propose a simple and effective method called NAT for AT. Briefly, our method uses a NAT mode to generate an original translation in parallel and then use an AT mode as a correction mode to revise errors in the original translation. And the left shows our algorithm flow, and uh, the figure 3 shows an example of how NAT for AT works. I will introduce our work based on this example. Uh, in this example, uh, our method first uh, uses uh, NAT mode to generate an uh, original result based on this source, source input. And when t equal to 1, uh, NAT480 takes the original result Y1 as the input to a AT decoder and get the AT result based on the grading search. And it's worth noting that because all tokens in Y1 are known, so uh, the AT mode can predict all tokens at the same time as during training. And then by traversing from left to right, based on the AT predict distribution probability, we can see that the first five tokens uh, probability difference is below the threshold S. 
the S is set to 0 0.3 in this example. So they are kept. And uh, in the sixth position, the probability difference is bigger than S. There is uh, uh, 0 0.4. So our method thinks the people is incorrectly predicted by NLT mode and reverse it uh, using the AT result, Yang. And because the Yang does not exist in the uh, sliding windows, so we just concatenate the subsequent content in the Y1 to the Yang to get the Y2. And when T equal to 2, uh, because the AT mode has a causal mask, so the first five tokens are predicted the same as before, so they can be skipped directly. And then our method can, can also find the token that needs to be corrected in the Y2 and reverse it using the AT result. There is the people. And because the people existing in the sliding windows, so we can connect the subsequent in the original result to the people to get the Y3. And the case of t equal to 3 and t equal to 4 is the sim similar as to before, so until the end. So from this example, we can see using our method can reducing the 15 iterations required by original AT mode to only 4, which significantly improves the uh, inference speed. And uh, in addition, because our method can retain some uh, NAT tokens, so it uh, take advantage of the complementarity between the AT and NAT, and uh, can improve the final translation quality. Uh, we compare our method with uh, existing method based on two commonly used uh, uh, data set for machine translation. As we can see in the table two, our method can achieve superior performance in the trade-off between translation quality and the inference speed. Specifically, our method can generate better translation safety, trans translations than previous fully NAT methods. Uh, secondly, our method can achieve lower inf inference latency than previous uh, interactive NAT method. Finally, our method can make AT mode translate faster and better. We also conduct the analyzed experiments of hyperparameters. As we can see in the figure four, using S can effectively trade off translation quality and the inference speed. When S equal to zero, uh, our method requires the tr final translation be the same as the AT result. So more, more number of interventions are needed. And when S increase, uh, the in number of iteration decrease, and uh, because of the complementarity between AT and NAT, the translation quality is improved. However, when S bigger than 0 0.4, our method may retain some worrying tokens predicted by NAT mode, so the, uh, the, the performer is decreased. And the figure 5 shows that our sliding window algorithm can significantly reduce the number of iterations. And we can see when w equal to zero, uh, our method requires the AT and NAT translation be strictly aligned. So an average of 9.8 iterations are re required by during inference. However, when w equal to two, our method allows the misalignment between AT and NAT and uh, significantly redu reduce the number of iterations. We also compare our method with the large language mode, including the open source and the camera mode. As we can see, our method outperforms the open source LLMs in, the, in both translation quality and the inference speed. Although compared to ChatGPT, our method can still return certain advantage, especially in the English to the German translations. We can even show better translation quality than ChatGPT. In conclusion, we propose a new decoding method called NAT480. It effectively utilizes the AT and NAT mode and uh, combines their advantage. It is a general and part and play, can be applied to various AT and NAT mode. Even compared to large language mode, our method can achieve 
Capacitive translation quantity with fast inference speed. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks. Okay, thank you.